This is Will Lindsay Otto, New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film. And my goodness, am I excited to introduce you to our latest Phoenix 360 Global Artist Ambassador, the one and only, I'm going to try to say this right, Jean-Yves Blondeau. Did I say that right? Yes. Yes. I Good. love it. Well, before we get to... Before we get to our interview, here is a sneak peek at the amazing talent of Jean-Yves Blondeau. Well, hello, Jean. How are you? Fine. Beautiful day. Nice to speak with you, Will. It is such a beautiful day where you are in France. Beautiful day here in New York City. And I just want to get started. You are known internationally as Rollerman, but we will get into that in just a moment, obviously, as the inventor of Buggy Rollin. But I want to begin with the little boy, Jean. You must have had some creative imagination growing up. You know, were you always interested in science fiction, the avant-garde, and did you always have an affinity for invention? Um, well, I can, I don't need to speak. You said everything already, so <laughs> how would I start it? Um, yes, um, if you speak about the little Jean, when he was uh, like three years old in the kindergarten, um remember in the head creating some machine i remember i was creating a machine to make a fence that the animals can be in a park but nobody would understand it because i in my head was a machine to make the hole then the arm to put the 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 stick then a machine to unroll the fence that's yeah um science fiction yes a patient for science fiction I was 10 years old when I saw the first Star Wars movie, which, which was really a, a nice kick. And when I was playing Frisbee with my friend, I was dreaming that it's a UFO. So this mind connected with a other universe than the one on Earth is really something which is in me, which has rediscovered a little bit later. I have really connection, but maybe that's too far away for this interview. Um, Creating, yes, because also I'm coming from a family with lots of brothers and sisters. And my bigger brother was um, studying architecture and he was bringing home some magazine with uh, um, machines like excavators, bulldozer, cranes. And from when I was very young, my room was with posters of such a machine, you know, no stars, no, but machines. And later, one of my, my other brother was working as an engineer in a fire truck company. So we bring home a drawing, a side view of a fire truck. 
and I was like six or seven years old at that time. And for me, it was, oh, if you want to create something, you have to draw everything from the side and make it with the rulers. So wow. from that, I was always dry, drawing all my helicopter, truck, car, motorbike, boats, and mean, airplanes, always I, with the ruler, you know. I love Nobody that, John. That. I mean, it seems like you were manifesting the buggy rolling since you were a little kid. And I think it's a good affirmation for any of the kids out there or any of the mm -hmm. adults with who are kids at heart to realize mm -hmm. that, you know, sometimes when we go into that moment of realizing what was our younger self dreaming about, you made those dreams a reality, my friend. Let's talk about Buggy Roland and Good. how that all came about. First off, the name, I love it. And all of the iterations of it. How many different models did you come up with before? Oh, wait, I, you have your dog? I have mine. <laughs> this is Bella. <laughs> Just, this is Follett. Just come to visit me right now. Bella she wanted to say hello too. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, talk to me about all of the iterations that you've had. How many different models did it take before you landed on the model, the invention? Um, yeah, okay. Um, I think I made a good uh, preparation study uh, because um this creation i made it in a uh, industrial design school in paris i studied body balancing sensation and locomotion for the space and for that i studied um, um, medicine that means how the body works how the body sensation oh, she wanted to go away. how the body balancing work i studied history of design to see how a creation is going good around with with the time i went to see a lot of uh, sports uh, sportsmen to understand how they use their body to make acceleration and how much link we can make between the science the physics of acceleration and what you have as a feeling in your head the purpose was to bring a maximum of things that could feed the imagination and the most feeding for the sensation that you can have fun for using it and so before creation i had all this background of data which was if you consider a project which was nine month project to get the information was six months then one month creativity and the two last months to make the first prototype so when i designed the prototype i had on one hand what i would like to do as a perfect thing if i had the money and on the other hand what i need to do as emergency because i had the time limit very short so for doing the first prototype i used really thing that i could find my father gave me some wheels for dolly for carrying the baby i went to a shop to get a mankind one size size one to shape the thing directly on the mankind and he was smoking because i was using hot plastics on it um and so the first prototype the pink one i don't know if you have seen it was really to show the function and there i could validate that it's possible to roll in in every position and it was fun to use it and then the second prototype, which was the, pro the I call it the carbon one. Uh, it was so made of carbon, sculpted, um, all shape, was very close from what I was dreaming to do on in the future. So this prototype from 1998, I still use it. I use it for the beginners who want to you try the buggy rain because now it's old. But the function, very nice. The comfort, very nice. And with this second buggy rain prototype, I could achieve the first speed record, which was not high at this time, like 70 kilometer per hour in the bob track and seven meter 10 in a high jump landing on the mattress. And on the real downhill, I was like 80 at in 1998. And then I made a second, I would say a third, wave of suit where i created molds by hand and with these molds um all these first cereal of suit they are really okay one more time more comfort more easy to use on fine tuning the angulation of the body and so i would say with three wave i could achieve something good now we are four wave where i have new set of wheels since a few years 
which are upgraded. It's a geometry things because we work with the body, which has its own understanding of motion and geometry. And so it's very understand, very important to be in coherence with the possibility. And I would say, what the body brings you in in terms of motion, the the natural way of the body to to get into motion, and really understanding that that the suit will help you to achieve that. That's amazing. I mean, look at you're bringing a smile to my face, which is, you know, one of your big quotes, if I can quote you, if I can take the people out of their great life and put a smile on their face, that is a great achievement. Well, you're already doing it with me. You've done it for millions around the world, but not only them, my friend, but superstars. I want you to talk to me a little. Well, first off, the godfather of Marvel, Stan Lee himself, has huh? called you yeah. real superhuman. Yeah. I want to yeah. know, though, what it was like for you to work with two of our biggest stars, both in the East and the West, Jim Carrey and Jackie mm -hmm. Chan. That must have been such a cool experience. Yeah, there's lots of I can we, we need a few hours to speak about uh, all the stories about that. So um, you start with uh, Stan Lee. Um, it was in a, in a TV in a TV serial called Superhuman. And uh, they, they, they called me, they asked me to get part of this, uh, of this uh, TV serial, which was very interesting because they set up or we set up together some challenges like, uh, will I be faster than, uh, than skateboarders or will I be faster than, than a car or such a things? And we make the challenge and uh, I could win or they make me win. And it was very nice to to make it. Um, I think I would have surprised them, especially the skateboarders. They thought they would be so much faster than me, and it was not. But uh, they were kids, so they didn't know me from a long time. And the thing is, they were really gentle. And the guy, the guy with a cart, we make a, a race in a parking lot with a spiral um, going out like this. And it was drifting all the time. And the pilot was a really nice guy, a professional pilot who, who bring three different kind of machines with more or less power. Finally, he chose the one which is not too big to be able to drive inside. And it was very, very close. We are in the same second at the end. It, it's very nice, very nice people to meet. And moreover, the, the, the host of the show, he's a superhuman too. He can... He's very flexible. So he was telling me stories where he could hide in the kitchen and suddenly you open to look for something and there's somebody <laughs> hidden inside. You could, you could get inside. Yeah, superhuman. Very interesting to meet the, these people. And in the feature, there's this incredible Japanese guy who, when you shoot uh, um, with a pistol with plastic balls at him, he could get out the sword and cut the, cut the ball in two pieces in the... In the time the ball arrived to him so very interesting people jim carrey yes please oh, tell I, me about jim carrey he's one head more than me okay very gentle jim carrey incredibly gentle the story with jim carrey like um, um i he authorized me to go everywhere in the sets he, he introduced me to everyone and um you know, in cinema, there's a kind of rules when you are on the set. The first row is a main actor, main actress, main actor assistant, main actress assistant, or it's the director and the director assistant. And second row, you have all the assistant of the main. And third row, you have the assistant of the assistant. And so in the first row, there is this place. It was him and Zoe de Chanel. He said, my place is between both. So you go, you sit here, first row. And that was really cool. So I could go everywhere in the set. I could visit everyone and I was very welcome. It was Warner Bros. They make me visit all the, the special effects because we had to build four suits for the movie. Uh, two for Jim Carrey and Zoe de Chanel and two for me and the stunt double. Uh, so we could film together at the same time. And Jim Carrey, for example, one of the story, um, I made uh, already my full day of, I had to train the stunt double to make the suit. And I arrived to the set around 10.30 or 11. And uh, I had my girlfriend with me and she was tired in the car. And I met Jim Carrey. He asked me, how my, how's my girlfriend? And I asked him, she's in the car, she's sleepy. Do you want to come to see, to see her? 
He went out of the set, walked outside to the car and opened the door and said, hello. And she, she, she woke up and said, <laughs> very gentle, Jim Carrey, very, very gentle. He gave me the best address of his favorite French restaurant in LA that I could go and say, I come from Jim Carrey, could you? And it was really welcoming. That's typically Jim Carrey. And, then, and Jackie Chan, even more story because with Jackie, we spend more time together for preparing the movie, for preparing all the stunt. There is one year and a half work before that, where I send him a lot of sketches and uh, storyboard extracts, extract when I say we could go on the wall or we could go over under the truck if we do like this, we could pass and push the wall with the foot, go with the bicycle. We So I proposed him many situations. And afterwards, when we meet in truth, we talk about how he could modify his script to integrate the burglary in, in the in the story, and then uh, put all the all the stunts in the in the movie. And when I arrived there, I saw they prepared many many stunts and something I thought it was impossible to do. But the stunt director, which is a good friend now, is Hei Jun. Um, he said, "No, no way, no way. We make wire." <laughs> We put wire. Don't worry, we are wire here, and we we tell you <laughs> there is wire. So okay, I said the handle. You can't do that. No, no way. Wire and the handle goes. Okay, okay, okay. So it's good. So the movie making the movie with Jackie was very nice. Also because he was hearing my proposition. Sometimes I show I saw that he was the way he put the camera because I'm used to make video sport video. So I like to emphasize the speed and the sensation you could have. So I also had my camera and I made the shot and then I show him my shot and he would compare and then he call everyone, change the camera system, change the fixation, really reset it in half an hour and then shoot what I proposed him. And he did that several times. That was really nice, you know, to have this trust uh, from his level to be able to open his mind. That is not the chef would not hear anyone, but being open and gentle, that was really cool. And the other nice things are many stories with Jackie. One of my favorite is he has a bar, his own club in Beijing, and he would invite us, the team, the stunt team, after the shooting sometimes. And um, the small story, when he arrives, there's nobody else. It, it's just for him. And the singers, the dancer arrives. No, I want to speak. So everyone disappears just for us. And there was a sequence where um, we the the roller man comes be, behind a motorbike guy, and he had to take him out of the motorbike to uh, it's not to fight but how to say that, to make him unable to run after the roller man anymore. And I proposed him that I could come from behind, lift under the arm, take off the motorbike, land with him, make a U turn, and let him on the floor. And we play like the kids, you know, like kid in the in the in the yard in the school. I do that, then you do that. And we were together and I was taking up and then he was taking me up and then we roll on the floor together and we play how it would be on the floor. And you see that in the movie, you see the, the sequence where the roller man comes behind the motorbike, catch it in the air, lifting, landing on him and then do the things. And the funny thing is when we made the, when we were the shooting, he had the stunt doubles to make the motorbike driver and another one who make the crash. And because he was landing on the back, uh, on the butt, he would scrap the, his uniform. It was an army guy. So scrap the uniforms. And then you could see in the uniform that he has underwear, pink with small, small arts. <laughs> the, the stunt guy could not do it. Then Jackie says, OK, give it to me. He wear the suit <laughs> and he crash on the floor and he stand up and we we've, we've stand up like this and <laughs> make the action. So nobody knows that he was. Uh, playing these actors at that moment, but only him could understand very fast how to play. And that was very, very fun. I learned well, a lot with you. Look really at John. I could speak with you all day, my friend. I think okay. you, I, I think that you have um you have mastered the art of allowing your inner child to breathe life into your work. Mm. It is so inspirational as a director myself who was once a performer for many, many years. Um, After this interview, I'm gonna take with me this infectious enthusiasm that you have not only for what you do, not only for 
how you do it, but how you make people feel, my friend, it is an inspiration. I, um, again, I could speak with you forever. I want everyone to please check out more on the amazing Jean. All of his information is below. Jean, I'm so excited you're coming on board as a Phoenix 360 Global Artist Ambassador. But beyond that too, I'm just so excited about what's to come. I mean, you know, the animation movie, the, the TV series, I now even have ideas about how do I selfishly, Will in New York, get to collaborate with Roller Man on something for the stage even. Um, I think that the um I think that the next opportunities are boundless and I'm just so incredibly grateful that we are meeting. Ah, I'm very happy. So thanks a lot for what you said. It's so nice and uh, so much compliment. I'm not used to hear that every day. <laughs> That's very nice. So thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks. Yes, uh, collaboration. I'm very open for creative collaboration. And I really like that we together could make something, bring ideas and and feed ourselves. That's that's really the thing. So how is one creation gets other people to get idea to bring more creation and that's make all the humanity going forward. And that's just amazing to be a part of that. I'm very happy when that happens. Me too, my friend. Me too. Thank you so much.